For 30 years we have been fighting tooth and nail for more pan-European democracy, for more powers for our elected European Parliament, and for an end to secrecy in the Council of Ministers. Well, with the agreement reached by our heads of state and government at 2 o'clock this morning in Lisbon on reform of the EU treaties, if they manage to get it ratified, we'll move the European Union a long way forward towards our goals. It's taken us five and a half years since the European Convention opened. The process has been rather like making sausages. It looks very messy, but the end product could be tasty and could be rather wholesome. And 2009 should prove a watershed for European democracy. National parliaments will get more of a say in European Union affairs. And the European Parliament, resurgent, will gain co-decision powers in 36 new policy areas. Powers to tackle terrorism, to promote legal migration, as uh, Artur was talking about, and to promote our values across the world. Because liberals want democracy, human rights, and the rule of law, not just for those of us fortunate enough to live in a developed part of the world like the European Union. We want them to flourish beyond our borders. And we know that no man is born a democrat, as Kofi Annan once said, just as no nation is born a democracy. If we want to extend our achievements of the last 50 years to the rest of the world in the next 50 years, then we need the tools and the savvy and the drive to make this the century of civilization. Now, I don't say that the amending treaty agreed last night gives Europe everything it needs, or that it is logically or legally watertight. A high representative for foreign affairs detached from the European Commission is a nonsense. Too many opt-outs raise the question of dropouts. Frankly, if a country cannot move with the mainstream, then an amicable divorce may be the most honest choice. Twelve stars will continue to shine up there. Beethoven's ninth will continue to resound, whether they are in the text of the treaty or not. But a treaty which keeps 27 diverse countries moving together in line allows us to move Europe forward. And we Liberal Dem Democrats, in the vanguard of Europe, the Mars Kramers from the Unia, as Anami might say, know how important that is. We have major challenges to tackle. Rapid world population growth and migration, climate change and energy security, internationally organized crime and international terrorism. These are supranational challenges that no one country can face alone. Challenges to which the response of national sovereignty opens the door to global anarchy. We face them together. Our common policies and our common institutions have to be fit for purpose, and I think this new treaty takes us there. And that's why Liberal Democrats, in the face of these challenges, are working together, bringing in the European Parliament colleagues from national parliaments together on issues like climate change, in a working party headed by Lena Eck, on issues like migration, by Alex Alvaro and his team on justice and home affairs, and on the tools the European Union needs with the work being done by Andrew Duff in Lisbon today. And it's also why I've embarked on visits to each of our 27 capital cities to prepare the ground for the union we need in 2009. A union which, in the words of the poet Tom McPaulin, must be like the juniper tree, tougher than the wind, rugged, fecund, with resin spines, our springy resistance skirting the warped polities of other trees bent in the Atlantic wind. For too long, the European Parliament has been stitched up by a Große Koalition, you call it in German, a grand coalition between the European People's Party and the Party of European Socialists. Just like in The Hague, in Vienna, and here in Berlin, you have a government which divides up the posts 
devoid of principle, in office for the sake of office. And this nihilistic nesting is stifling political debate on our continent, delaying urgent decisions, drowning democracy by giving politics a bad name. The good news is that the hold of the Grand Coalition is starting to loosen. Because politics is dividing along new lines. In one camp, you've got the people who react to globalization by pulling up the drawbridge, seeking solace in the old certainties. On the other, together with us, the advocates of the open society, slowly but inexorably moving onto liberal democrat territory. You know, most socialists are coming to grips with the failure of the socialist dream, recognizing that only the market can deliver prosperity for Europe's citizens in an age of global trade. They've learned to look at labor market reform, at consolidation of public finances, at the need for competitiveness, as last year's European Socialist Manifesto showed. Of course, they can't bring themselves to call these ideas liberal. They have to tell us that these ideas are a, a bold, new approach, progressive politics, or the third way. But frankly, if it looks like a duck, and it walks like a duck, and it quacks like a duck, it's a duck. These are ideas we've been promoting for years. We've always believed, we've always believed that a strong and successful Europe has to be free and open and democratic and innovative. And we should welcome new converts to our cause. And that's why I want to develop. I want to develop ideas like flex security with Europe's trade unions. I want to flesh out new approaches to trade and migration with those people on the right wing who recognize that either we take the produce of poorer countries or we end up taking their people. Indeed, the challenge for us is not only to break the inherent conservatism of the Grand Coalition, where a failing European People's Party Europe is propped up by a socialist poodle pinching crumbs from the table. We've got to build a consensus of li around liberal ideas, which will appeal to many people on the right, fearful of the retreat of their colleagues into nationalism or into Vatican orthodoxy, and to those on the left who are devoid of a, so of a credible socialist alternative. A consensus of radical ideas that's going to give Europe the leverage to face up to the supranational challenges of our age is starting to take shape. Italy, Poland, they are examples of where liberals are joining forces with like-minded parties. In both cases, but by no means necessarily, with the pro progressive left. And I see no reason why we should not repeat that experiment in other countries. Pulling modernizers from the left and the right onto our ground. Because the flowers of liberalism have seeded themselves in greater or lesser quantities into the thought of others. So don't be afraid of other people moving onto our ground. Embrace them. Be confident in the power of liberal ideas. Use their attachment to our ideas for the benefit of Europe and its neighbors and indeed the wider world. We have to rise to the challenge of 2009. So my challenge to you today is this. Free Europe from its political slumber. Reignite the fire of ideas. And as we approach the European elections, go out and win Europe for the liberal democratic center.